Hello everybody, welcome to another video of learning malware analysis with PACT. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into how to set up SNOT in order to use it more effectively or rather to use it effectively to aid in the elements that would necessarily give your other solutions an advantage when it comes to a holistic detection method. In this video, we're going to look at the elements needed when installing SNOT how to actually install SNOT and the first time configuration of SNOT. So in order to install SNOT, we need three main things. The first element is the SNOT installer. This is on, especially on Windows, you can get a pre-built binary of the installer. You also need the Win Pickup library because it's needed to do the packet capturing and packet filtering, or basically packet analysis is done through this library. And then lastly, you need to get the basic SNOT rules. So this will be used as your starter before you actually get the final rules. So some of these elements can be found online. So as you can see, WinPickup can be found on winpickup.org. And then for SNOT, you will need to download the binaries. So you will download the SNOT installer. This is the first thing you'd need. And then also, you need to have signed in in order to get the SNOT rules. So you can get a snapshot, please ensure you get the snapshot for the exact version you've downloaded for the installer. So we have our copy here. We have our copy of SNOT here. So these are the files we need. So the first one is the installer. We have WinPickup. Now because we installed Flare VM, it does come with Wireshark which installed the WinPickup driver already. So we might not need to install this at this point. So we'll just need to install SNOT. This is the SNOT source code. We'll just need a configuration file from it. And these are the SNOT rules. So let's start the process. So we'll install SNOT in its default folder, which is CSNOT. That should be fine. So we'll just close that. It'll tell you about WinPickup being needed. We already have WinPickup, so we'll not need to install WinPickup at this point. So when we come here, we will see that we have SNOT, but we have no rules, no pre-proc rules, as well as the config is not usually up to date. So, in order to sort this out, these are very basic. So we'll start with the SNOT rules. As you can see, it's quite a number of files. So some of the things we'll take from here are the rules, the pre-proc rules, and the etc folder. The reason we don't take the SO folder is because we don't use shared objects within Windows. So we will not need those at the moment. However, if installing on Linux, you may need that folder. So I'll just drag and drop to replace the files which are already there and add the ones which I don't have. So that should be fine. Now next, we have this node source code, which you retrieved from the website still. So here it is. The reason being the configuration file in this is more up to date than any of the other installs. So we'd prefer to use this instead. So the only file we need is the SNOT configuration file. Otherwise, the others are fine. So once again, we'll need to do a replace here from the source. As you can see, there have been some edits on this file so that's why we'll need that so i think we are ready to do our snout configuration so here's the snout configuration and we'll need to edit quite a number of items so the first one is the interface where the home address is so you can retrieve this from your windows so we'll just run command prompt, IP configuration, and we will use the fast interface card. So that's the first thing we edit. Now the other thing we need to edit is the rules. So as you can see, the rules path is not full, so we will just replace it with the snot rules path. So the same thing happens for the pre-proc rules. So we will configure SNOT now so that we can make it a bit easier to use. So we'll need to tell it where to find the rules and the likes. 
So we'll start with the home interface. Uh, we can just add our IP address uh, for the interface we want to use to capture. In order to find this, you can always just do IP configuration and you should be able to see the interface. The next thing you will want to check is the rules. And here you can configure the rules as per our full path we installed is not in the default path so this should work and this is quite easy because the rules are in predefined folders so this is preproc then the next thing is looking at the whitelist and blacklist path which will be still in the rules folder so we'll just replace those. Now for this two, we will need these files, white underscore list dot rules and black underscore list dot rules. So we need to create those files because they're not existent in the rules folder. So you'll come to snort rules and then do text document white underscore list dot rules and black underscore list dot rules so those two files will enable you to define whitelist and blacklist when it comes to snot now next we still haven't done the full configuration we will need to configure the log directory so we can just search for the log directory yes so this is how we need to configure it and we need to set it to config log dire c snot log so this will tell snot that it needs to log files into that directory now next we need to look at the dynamic preprocessor now the dynamic preprocessor is uh, also key a lot of these things you'll notice we are building basically paths to them so it's not really much so this can be found so here it is so the smart dynamic preprocessor so again it's just because the paths are more linux oriented if you're doing a linux install you'd probably have less to do so as you notice this is good please do not add the trailing slash it usually leads to a few errors here and there so again the path to the base preprocessor engine rather than dynamic engine can still be found in the same folder so we'll just look at that lib again dynamic engine and then it's sf underscore engine dll so again we're not using shared objects so no need for that and then path to the snort dynamic rules we have already set this above so we'll just comment that out that should be fine so the next thing we need to look at is the output plugins so the output plugins are classification.config so again this needs the full path which is c it's not etc classification.config and the same thing for reference now if you come to the snot folder and go to etc you should be able to see the two files so again we're fixing paths because windows does not have the paths fixed now another thing we need to add is an output so that you can get alerts so output alert first alert dot ids so this way snort will dump logs in alert dot ids that should be very straightforward now another thing you'd notice is when we are configuring the network we use ipvar however it's not known it's, so we might need to change all the ip bars to var yeah they should be roughly around 11 so they'll be changed 
So move down. There is something we haven't configured on the preprocessors. So the inline. So again here. These are quite noisy. But we can leave them on for now. They do nothing in IDS mode. So let's just test our snort configuration first. But we could configure them in case they bring any issues. So we we'll change directory to snort. And then bin. So in order to run snort, we would need to specify the binary snort. And then additionally, you will need to specify the interface. In this case, I'll just use my second interface. And then the method is console, or rather the interface to use is console. And then tell it where the configuration is. So what we've just configured right now is not etc configuration, And then ideally, we also need to tell it where to log. So minus L and then C is not log and then the format of logging should be ASCII. I typed this wrong, it's not dot conf. So that should get your snot running and it should really be quite easy. With that I think snot can run fine and it should be ready to start picking packets. I hope that has shed light on exactly what we needed to do to set up Snot. As you've seen, it's a bit of a process, especially configuring paths. On Windows, that's the main headache, which is configuring paths. But once you're done with that, it should be quite good.